Next, we want to turn to the future of collaborative AI in banking. Mohammed Khalifa leads AI and innovation for JP Morgan's US private bank, where he's pioneering some really new approaches to federated learning and collaborative intelligence. His work is going to show us how financial institutions can innovate while maintaining the highest standards of privacy and security. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. It's an honor to be here, really, in Dubai, really a place um, really shaping the future of leadership and innovation. Uh, my name is Mohammed Khalifa, and I lead AI and innovation for our US private bank based in the US. And I'm here today to talk to you about a subject that is incredibly interesting for us, not only disrupting our industry, but truly redefining the way we think about work intelligence, and human connections. And uh, I would like to start uh, with a question, really. What is the role of AI in an industry like ours, one built on relationship, trust, and expertise? And for me, the answer is actually simple. AI isn't here to replace us. It's here to amplify us. And in the private bank, we're truly embracing this philosophy by building a platform that we call Coach, that take the collective expertise of the private bank and bring it in a platform that not only scale human decision making, it scales it by transforming information overload into clarity, inefficiency into focus, and complexity into opportunity. In an industry as personal as, as wealth management, trust is everything. So AI's biggest achievement isn't about automation and speed, it's about freeing up our people to do what they do best. Build that trust, this relationship, and give advice that is personal and thoughtful. So today I'll walk you through how we thought about Coach, how we're thinking about it. It's a story more than technology and more about human collaboration. So I'd like to start with um, the first thing, which is JP Morgan is home to some of the finest and brightest mind in financial services, from investment to lending to all type of areas. But in such a vast organization come an inherent challenge, complexity. Our people have to spend a lot of time navigating systems, talking to experts to get the answer they need. Our experts have to spend a lot of their time responding to people with their question about this expertise that they need. This friction created complexity and slow decision making. But what if we could take all of this expertise and really turn it into an opportunity? What if we could take all this complexity, all these systems, tools, teams, data, and bring them together and connect them in a way that our advisor have access to them anytime, anywhere. This is a problem we set out to solve with Coach, really trying to unify our expertise so any advisor can have access to it by simply asking a question. So I'm gonna walk you through how Coach is designed. Uh, just like a lot of the way we interact with LLMs today, it's a natural language interface that allows advisors to ask questions. Um, you can ask a simple or a complex question, and behind it, we have what we call an orchestrator. The idea of the orchestrator is that it's a brain that tries to determine which underlying expertise it needs to be able to answer that question. It can then orchestrate it and find an agent that is built internally that can help with that answer. We have an open model of multiple modular agent-based LLM services that our teams across the organization have built. Think of an expert agent in lending, in investment, a CRM agent. The idea is that we can tap into any agent or multiple agents to get the answer that our advisor needs. And all of this is powered by our incredible amount of structured and unstructured data, all within our walls and infrastructure, ensuring maximum privacy and security. And in order to do that, there is a process. We first start by ident identifying all these domains we need. I'm gonna give you an example. We get a lot of questions about taxes internally. So taxes is a domain. We then work with this expert to develop a specialized agent that can take their expertise and put it in a scalable model. We spend a lot of time testing and iterating with this expert real world scenarios to make sure that those answers are accurate before they get into the real world. And once they're ready, we integrate them with coach, with the agent's ecosystem and give them to advisors. And I'm gonna give you an example now and start on how does coach orchestrate expertise. Let's say, for example, an advisor use it and type, help me prepare for my meeting. The first step that happened 
is coach has an agent that pure goal, only goal, is to understand the intent and the question and have an interaction with the user to really understand which agent it needs to answer this question. It's LLM based and it can understand your query and then tap into which specialized agent it needs. Help me prepare for my meeting, might need multiple agent, a CRM agent, an investment agent, your calendar, and really come back with a concise response to the advisor that they can use with their client. And then the advisor is empowered to really give feedback to make sure the system continuously learn. This is really about giving advisor all the time to build that trust with client and focus on it instead of finding data and interacting with systems. And in our industry, trust is not just important, it's everything. Our client entrusts us with their most personal and financial goals. They trust us not only to know about their priorities, but also act in their best interest, often across generations of family. And we've been doing that for 200 years. So we take this incredibly seriously. So AI isn't about replacing that trust, it's about enhancing it. And in order to do that, you need deeply personal relationship, human relationship, human skills and qualities that only humans can do. So AI is here to help with the data analysis, really leaving the advisors with the human side of things, which needs the ability to listen deeply to what clients truly need, empathy and judgment. I'm gonna give you a real world scenario. One of our advisors had a client with a significant milestone approaching um, a liquidity event tied to a sales of a business. And, and using Coach, they were able to create a tailored plan that really aligned with the client's unique goals. But what made that moment impactful wasn't the AI-generated insight. It was the ability for the advisor to put this insight and frame them in a way that resonated with the client, showing deep understanding and care for their future. This is the essence of how AI and humans will work together. AI can handle all the math and crunching numbers and an analysis, leaving the humans do what they do best, talking to people, giving advice, creating value. And in order to do that, trust is not just about technology, it's about using technology responsibly. And we also at the private bank take this incredibly seriously. Data privacy, explainability, and also human in the loop. All of our tools have this principle. The advisor is at the center of every decision. And um, we also have rigorous training program to teach them how to use these tools. It's not just about the technical aspect of the tools, but also how can you feel confident using them. And every coach insight and answer is explainable, transparent, and delivered with the highest standard of client confidentiality and care. This is to ensure that while AI is there to empower advisors, the ultimate decision making stays with them. And T today, Coach is really known for its chat interface. And you know, you ask question, and, and I heard a lot of topics today about adoption and why people don't try tools. And it's really hard to get started. And, and I personally believe that everybody will have an aha moment about a feature or workflow that they discover, that they use, and that really changed the way they see this product. And, and we're doing internally, we're doing a lot of communication, a lot of sharing knowledge and sharing of use cases. And I heard this story, I don't know if it's true, but at the start of Uber, maybe it's not true by the way, so don't quote me on this. Uh, apparently Uber realized that when the riders took their second ride, they almost became riders for life. Because they discovered the first time you notice this product and use it, it says it's great. Second time you're sitting at, at the restaurant, you order your car, come out, you see the car ready, you don't talk to anyone, you get you to your place and you're like, this is, works for me. This does something that makes my life better. And I think this is the same thing we're seeing with LLMs and AI, it takes few prompts, few use cases before you get that. And, and I think we're not even waiting for that. Our vision extends beyond that. We really wanna have a more of a proactive intelligence engine. And we're building, evolving coach to become that proactive intelligence engine. And the idea is that we don't wanna wait for the advisor to ask a question. We wanna anticipate their needs. We wanna be proactive and deliver insight before they even realize it. Really turning them into a true AI partner. And in order to do that, and our vision is very, very clear. We want to make every advisor as effective as our best advisors. And in order to do that, we want to scale the expertise and intuition of our best performers. And we're on a journey to build what we call knowledge graphs. These knowledge graphs will map the intuition and thinking and expertise of these advisors. It will allow coach to understand how they think, prioritize, and make decisions. And it will then scale this expertise across the entire organization. And whether you're a new advisor in Singapore or a veteran in New York, 
the goal is for coach to ensure that you have access to the same level of insight and strategies. And this is not just about technology. It's about scaling human excellence. And this is really, really important because in AI, uh, you know, we tend to completely forget about the human side of things. We focus so much on what the technology can do that we lose sight of who it is for. We get so immersed in developing models, uh, benchmarking them, building algorithms, processing data that we forget who this tool is for. Humans don't think like systems. We bring emotion, intuition, but also a lifetime of experience in every decision we make. Our workflows aren't always logical. Our communication isn't always linear. This beautiful and perfect complexity is what makes us humans. And if AI doesn't reflect that, it risks becoming alienating and ineffective. For example, the way people communicate. People don't think in rigid input and output. We pose, we pivot, we rely on tone, context, and intuition. For example, an advisor might use our tool and say what's happening in the market and evolve into a much more specific query as the discussion evolves, new ideas come up. So we're designing our tools so they can adapt to these dynamic flows. It's not just about delivering answers. It's about meeting advisors where they are at in their thinking process and evolving with them. The way we work. People have unique ways of getting things done. Some thrive on structures, others rely on instant and creativity. AI tools must allow that flexibility, not on force rigidity. Their insight and recommendation must be intuitive, not descriptive. Think about how an advisor might prepare for a client meeting. They need both the raw data, but also room for interpretation. And AI is really there to simplify the former so they can do the latter. The way we learn, AI systems must account for the fact that we're constantly learning and adapting. A good tool doesn't just deliver insights. It makes me smarter over time. And we're so focused on making sure that every interaction teaches the advisor something new. And finally, the way we make decisions. People don't make decisions on logic alone, unfortunately. <laughs> Emotion, context, you know, and bias play significant roles. So when designing these tools, we need to make sure that we take this into account, meaning explain exactly why I showed you that insight and that recommendation. And at the heart of everything we do is this concept of curiosity, which is really the courage to ask questions and explore possibilities and seek new ways of working. And as our CEO of an asset and wealth management, Mary Erdos, who's really the driving force behind everything we do with AI, put it nicely, curiosity is a key thread that will define the winner of the AI age. And we're truly embracing that mindset. We're encouraging exploration by really making a safe space for our advisors to ask questions. Really, it could be a simple clarification or it could be a complex query. I don't know about you, but you know, when, I'm sure Harvard students have this problem. They don't want to ask dumb questions. So, you know, giving them a safe space so anyone can ask anything will encourage learning and make sure that people are expert in everything. Simplifying access to information. We're bringing all this expertise into a tool that every employee has access to. So you can ask that complex lending question of, or that specific DAF account work. And finally, enhancing learning. Every interaction with coach is an opportunity for an advisor to learn, grow, but also refine their expertise. And this journey didn't just start with AI. We've been really working on this innovation journey for a while at JP Morgan. We built a culture where collaboration and innovation thrive. And we're empowering employees from all level, from all over the world, to come up with their boldest ideas, partner with our engineers, designers, and data scientists, and really turn their concept into reality, pitch them to more senior leadership. We do AI day, innovation weeks, all, the, all year long, and it's a continuous feedback cycle, meaning that we're constantly listening to feedback. We're constantly listening to what the industry is doing. We're partnering with academia. We want to make sure that we're two steps ahead and we're not missing anything. I actually just came from New York where we had um, our innovation competition last week, um, and we actually managed to get a quick video uh, that's recapping in less than one minute that I want to play for you. We're here in New York for the Global Innovation Competition. We're so excited. 450 ideas submitted from 70 cities around the world. Let's see who's going to win. I'm heading from Hong Kong to New York today. Super excited to be a part of the Global Innovation Competition.
We've been using AI to supercharge our research and development to develop products that'll make advisors' lives easier. So we've been prototyping with technology and design for the past two days, and we're so thrilled to present our idea. I'm excited to be in New York and see our idea come to life. As a new joiner to the firm, it's amazing to see the level of innovation that we have here. Really inspiring to see everyone working really hard, moving really quickly. A highlight thus far has been teams flying in globally for our New York City innovation competition. The energy is incredible. It has been an amazing opportunity. Everyone is super talented from design, tech, and product. Being part of the Global Innovation Competition has been a highlight of my year at the private bank. This is what makes our place special. It makes a big firm feel small, and it gives everyone a chance to put their best foot forward. It is so important because it takes ideas directly from advisors and puts it at the very top of the list. This is the third year that we're doing it. The ideas keep getting better and better. This is by far my favorite day of the year. All right, I'm so excited for the competition that's gonna be happening in just a couple of minutes. There's some amazing ideas out there. Number one this year was Horizon. <laughs> This feels incredible. I couldn't imagine how much this, I was going to learn from this process. I'm so excited to see where this tool goes. So as you can see, this is quite a, quite a, quite a, um, an event that is full of energy. That I love what Dave Frame, who's the CEO of our U.S. private bank, said. It, feels, it makes a big firm feel small, and that's incredibly important. And as we close, I want to leave you all with a final thought. Uh, we often think of AI as a tool for speed and precision but its real power lies in its ability to transform how we, people work together. At the heart of coach is a simple but profound truth. AI isn't about eliminating humans, it's about elevating them. It's about taking the empathy, creativity, and expertise of our people and enhancing into a collaboration with the best technology. And at the private bank, we're doing that by unifying our expertise into a platform that not only answer questions but also anticipate needs. We're not just making our advisors more efficient. We're making them more curious, more empowered, and more impactful. And we're not just transforming processes. We're driving innovation. The future of AI isn't reactive. It's proactive. It doesn't disrupt trust. It's threatened it. And it doesn't compete with people. It's enable them to achieve more. This is the power of collaborative intelligence. It's a foundation for everything we're doing in the future. And we're incredibly excited. Thank you very much.